Hey, you gang, we are at the, the House of Usher mausoleum. Well, it's not the House of Usher. We'll talk about it with Britain here. We've got a double feature for you tonight here from Lawrence, Kansas. We've got some history we're going to talk about here at Oak Hill Cemetery. We're going to take a walk. We're going to look at a monument. We're going to look at a grave after we talk a little bit about the Usher family. And then we are going to kick over to the IQ channel for the next part of our feature at 8.30 p.m. to check out the paranormal aspects of this very enchanting, intriguing story. So let's take a walk in Britain. Tell us, tell us about the Usher family we see here. We've seen this mausoleum before. It's pretty incredible, too. I did not know the history. You say it has ties to Lincoln? Yeah, Mr. John Palmer Usher. Born, raised, and educated in the state of New York. A lawyer, a couple different law schools. From there, he blazed a trail west, though. Uh, at one time, he was the Attorney General of the state of Indiana, and he is most famously known for being Abraham Lincoln's Secretary of the Interior during the Civil War. Uh, I want to say 1862 to 1865, he was Lincoln's Interior Secretary right on board with his cabinet. We have a few of his uh, few of his partners and pals over at Rose Hill Cemetery that we've covered. But yeah, this is John Palmer Usher and his family. So that is the story of Usher. So let's walk up the hill, Britain, and let's start talk let's talk about the story that we're focused on today. I mean it it centers around the Civil War. A lot of Civil War people are here, buried, and we're going to end up talking about going to a monument that represents the burial location of probably about 150 Quantrill Raid victims, men and boys, right? Yes, sir. Tell us a little bit about it. August of 1863, Quantrill and his men come into Lawrence. Mm-hmm. They slaughter 150 citizens, mostly men and boys. From that point, the majority of all their bodies were buried at something called the Pioneer Cemetery, which is right outside of town. We covered that one, yeah. Now, there are some Quantrill victims there, and they're marked, so I'm guessing that those people, they were left. But there were only, there were only just a handful. Yeah. Now, look at this, Bullware. That is a name, that is a name we just did an episode on in Minnesota, that ghost boy. Now, that's an unusual name. Well, thank you for your service, Private Indeed. Gray Bullware. Anyway, back okay. to the story. Yeah, a few years after Pioneer Cemetery gets those bodies interred there, the founders of the city of Lawrence founded this cemetery here because Pioneer was on the outskirts, it was not so easily maintainable, and uh, in the late 1860s, early 1870s, garden-type cemeteries were starting to get established, and this was just the perfect location for the blueprints of what they wanted it to be. Now, shortly after this cemetery gets established by the Free State Pioneers, as they were known, they erected a monument and dug up and moved a handful of the bodies from Pioneer Cemetery. I believe it's between 45 and 50 of the victims of the raid were then reinterred here where they have a real nice monument that they set up. So as we talked about Quantrill's raid, 1863, right in the middle of the Civil War, Border ruffians coming to invade Jayhawk country. Abolitionists here, led by, led by Henry Lane, James Henry Lane. We're gonna stop by his grave we've covered. But yeah, they killed, they had somewhere around 300 horsemen armed with bloody Bill Anderson. We talked about him and they came in and just wiped out the town. They burned a lot of the buildings to the ground and they just killed all the men and boys they could find. Pretty much. Now we're heading to the monument 
which is at the top of this hill and it's it's here where they really started the cemetery Oak Hill now James Lane this is where we get the term Jayhawker or Jayhawk he was the leader he was the instigator he was the defender and he would he would he would get troops and he would go back across the Missouri border and they would make raids and attacks nothing like Quantrill but it was a back and forth thing but it all culminated in August 1863 when they rode in I believe it was from Mount Oriad we have the Oriad on campus right now the hotel and they rode down on Lawrence and one of the hotels there we're going to talk about it was the Eldridge House we are going to be doing some paranormal studies but back to these people we stop here and we give honor to these victims because all here in this big big clearing are the victims most of the victims of Quantrill's raid men and boys all buried here together in a mass grave this is what started the cemetery yes so let's take a look at the monument this is the back of the monument but it's really just a dedication I mean not just a dedication it stands for so much more but here we see it says dedicated to the memory of the 150 citizens who defenseless fell. yeah defenseless thank you fell victims to the inhuman ferocity of Don, what does that say border gorillas ah border gorillas led by the infamous Quantrell in his raid upon Lawrence August 21st 1863 erected this was erected well this was erected in May of 1835 no it has to be 1935 all right here we go 1885 1885 yes, sir. it looks like it said 1935 but we know that can't so we've got the roll it says the roll of their names may be found in the city clerk's office Lawrence and in the records of the State Historical Society in Topeka so I'm sure we can find that online yeah. 45 to 50 souls here in this area may God rest them in peace so we walk now to the monument of James H Lane and family who is a hero he sadly took his own life unexpectedly he was with his I think it was his brother-in-law in a carriage stepped out of the carriage and put a gun under his chin and pulled the trigger see the inscription of Mary his wife we've covered this but we're just passing by Born in Brussels, Belgium. Oh, here's his stone. I don't know if we've covered this. Fast video. Well, oh, that can't be him. Those dates don't line no, up. No, no. I think his inscription, this is James Lane Jr. I know his stone is here somewhere. Well, maybe on the last side we didn't cover here. No, I did. I covered that. That's General just James it's, H. Lane. it's his name. So anyway, now let's talk about the Eldridge Hotel and let's talk about the Eldridge family who were cornerstone people here, pioneering people in Lawrence, and they survived the Quantrill raid. There was a man named Shaler Eldridge. He had a, a wife named Mary, Mary Norton Eldridge and they had four daughters. Sadly, 
Mary passed away four years after the Civil War in 1869, I think it was February, and he would go on to remarry, but this guy, would tell us a little background of Colonel Eldridge. Colonel Eldridge was born 1816, West Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, very industrious, illustrious young man. He started out working for numerous railroad companies, which got him out here into Kansas, where he established, actually here in the town of Lawrence, where he established what was known as the Free State House, which was technically the first hotel in Lawrence, Kansas. And the Free State House was founded by one of the railroad companies that he worked for back on the East Coast. Uh, he spent time working for the Kansas State Legislator. He was a quartermaster for the Army. Um, he founded what was known, well, you have the Free State Hotel, which in August of 1863 was actually burnt to the ground by Quantrill and his raiders. Uh, he escaped safely with his family. A few years after that, he built what is now known as the Eldridge Hotel in downtown Lawrence. I think at the time it was called the Eldridge House. Eldridge House, right. And then, yeah, he bounced around with the Kansas House of Representatives. Uh, he was the Secretary of State for a while, I do believe. Uh, he really managed his finances well and expanded into, uh, you know, into hotels all throughout the state. Now that hotel was burned, like many other buildings in the Quantrill raid. It wasn't burned to the ground ground, I mean it was made of stone and brick. And Britton and I are staying over tonight at the hotel in a famous room 506. It is the room that is said to be Colonel Eldridge's favorite room and where he still frequents and other stories if you are into that we're gonna again after this, we're going to investigate all that tonight. But we are at the grave of the colonel and his family. And now this headstone here that we're seeing is actually his brother, JB, who rose all the way up to the rank of major. Uh, Shaler Eldridge lies right here. His wife, Mary, right here. Uh, their four daughters, who all married prominent businessmen, uh, are scattered throughout the cemetery here, but this is all that there is to mark the spot of the Eldridge family. Very famous, the founders of the free state, known as Kansas. I cannot believe that this is all, this is all there is for this entire family. We have the Eldridge Hotel and there's no stone for Colonel Eldridge, no stone for his family. This just happens to be his brother's stone. But this is a big, big clear area here. There is probably anywhere from 10 to 20 internments here. Uh, 12 plots, 11 members of the family. 11? Mm -hmm. Great research, Britton, great research. Thank you. All right, gang, so. Rest God bless and protect the Eldridge family. You they, are not forgotten. They are definitely not forgotten. And I'll tell you this, we're okay, we're gonna go check in. And those of you that want to continue with us to see the Eldridge Hotel, which is pretty famous here in Lawrence, and also want to go through the night with us and see if we, if we can find any energies. That's on the IQ channel, the link right up here, the link in the description box. We will see you at 8.30 for the rest. Have a great Sunday. We'll see you next week.